Welcome back to Laughing in the Dark, the podcast where Sarah hangs out in haunted places with comedians. I'm not your host, Randall Lawrence. That's you got that down. <laughs> you have that right down. Can you hear like when I record a bunch of those in a row and send it to you? Mm-hmm. Not really season. Well, I guess for season three, too. I did record a bunch in a row you had a for few the of, mini. Yeah, you had like four, four. Yeah, actually. Yeah. The mini. For the mini. Did all I did yeah. all the intro outros for the mini. So it's like in one sitting. Uh-huh. Can you tell by like the ninth or tenth one that I'm just getting tired of saying the same shit? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, you're here, clearly, so... Obviously. Fucking listen to the show. We got some person talking about some shit. I get, like, because what I'll do is I'll write a bunch of intro outros, especially for the minisodes. Like, I'll write a whole bunch of them all in one sitting, and then I'll try to get them all out, because I'm planning, like, I have the rest of my life going on, too. So it's like I plan in my schedule, okay, I have to record, like, 13 intro outros and send them to Randy, and then I'll sit there and write them all out, which is a task. And then right. I'll go and read all of them. And it's like I try to sound excited on every single one because I am. I'm excited about right. the stories. I'm excited to share them. But it's just saying the same shit over and over and over again. Yeah. And trying to sound excited. It's by, like exhausting. An, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's so by the exhausting. ninth one, I get like afraid that it's going to come out and it's going to be obvious that I'm like, Welcome back to Laughing in the Dark. <laughs> just turn into a really, really sassy, like, 17-year-old. Just cynical. Welcome back to Laughing in the Dark. You know what the show is. You clicked on it. Anyway, it's starting now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you don't um, notice that when you do it, when no. you edit? No, no, no. You actually are really good at keeping it consistent. For sure. Well, and thank you. I think you. the two of us have a pretty good idea of uh, making sure the other is aware of like, hey, this could be done better. Yeah, um, I think so too. For next time. I think we do that pretty well with each other. So We do. Yeah. Yeah, we really do. Yeah. Uh, so no, I, I think I think the intros and outros are, are great every time. Well, thank you. Yeah. You don't hear all the like bloopers that I go through. Oh, some of them I do, and they make me laugh really hard because you apologize to me, and like, yeah, the thing that's the so Catholic for- in me. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's left so, of it anyway? Right. Uh, when I edit those files, I can actually see visually where the good recording is based on the length of time between dead air right yeah and when you fuck up i can kind of see because it's like two blurbs of talking and then a quiet blurb which is usually going fuck sorry randy (laughs) and then a long pause and then you start again so like if i see that i can go okay i'm gonna laugh right here but then here's where i need to do my job (laughs) yeah Um, (laughs) pretty much so those are those are a fucking treat let me tell really? you, those are a tree. Oh yeah. I love when you leave those in. It's really Yeah. Funny. I, you know what it is? Cause I'm like a perfectionist. So yeah. it's like, by the time you receive the recording from me, there have been times like I stop and re-record so many times oh, and I'll fuck okay. things up so often and I get so annoyed and then I'll just completely start over. Cause I don't want you to have to sit there of me like constantly making mistakes. Right. So by the time you get it, That's why the few mistakes you hear, I'm even more irritated because it's happened like 40 (laughs) times before that, you know? I'm so happy to know that. (laughs) I mean, I I think like towards the end of this season, I started to just kind of be like, whatever. And I would just literally start saying to you like, okay, let's take it from here and like keep like as if I were in the studio with you. Yeah. And that was was actually really helpful. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Because I listen. I So... I listened to the whole file all the way through once before yeah. doing anything with it to, to get an idea of what I need to do. Yeah. And then I place it and listen to it to make sure it sounds good. Then yeah. work on the episode, then do the outro and repeat the same process for the outro. Listen to it by itself, place it, listen to it again. And then before I export it, I listen to the whole beginning up to about 15 to 20 seconds to the beginning and then the complete fade out, including the ad. Just to make yeah. sure, like it's all it's all straight. 
Yeah. I've made the mistake before. So once you make I mean, it, it once, you're like, hey, not doing that again. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's something I'll say, too, for this season, particularly. Um, I feel like our listeners, I called them our um, like bonus producers. Like they were yeah. all like sending messages like, hey, just so you know, um, one of them, I think this season was like at the very end yes, of the complete intro, there was like a little blurb there. Which means, like, what I thought was so crazy about that is that means our listener listened to the complete episode, like, through the ads at the end that we do for Heck Yeah Studios and everything. Uh And then, like, at the very end was like, oh, this is just a little spot from your phone call with with someone else. Yeah, so that was, uh, I think, the second mini-sode of this season. Yeah, it sounds Um, right. So what I usually do is go through the episode and around 20 to 30 minutes in there's usually a really good stopping point and i'll grab that and just take the the rest of everything and push it 45 minutes into the future so it's very clearly distinguished as stuff i'm not going to use yeah and then in my program i can select clips to make into the episode or i can just do the whole thing from start to finish and mm-hmm. i just missed the selected clips that one last and bit didn't even fucking think about it when it went out i think it was also like two in the morning when i was doing that so <laughs> no that like i'm not mad i mean i'm not coming of down course. on you for it. it's just no i know i know for sure but uh, i just love to peek behind that. the curtain oh, yeah exactly well i could see that too because like for a little bit of the season one i was doing my own editing with the clips of some before you got on board Right. So I've done it myself before too. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Like I've moved like parts of audio over and mm-hmm. been like, okay, I'm just not going to look at this right? and not fully delete it yet, but just not look at it anymore for a while. Right. I don't think right. I want it, but. But just in yeah. case, you know, we get a, we get a random hair in the off season, like, Hey, we should go and put together like little snippets of shit that still exists that nobody got to listen to. And Do it's you- like, <laughs> Do you actually have any snippets of my um what what blooper reels from I I did not have the time to make any this season. Uh, oh, that's okay. But all of the audio exists still. It so exists. even if it's been edited, I can go <laughs> yeah. and put back all the unedited well, stuff. Well, that's true. I have it, all the raw files on my computer too. So, yeah. I mean, it might be kind of funny eventually to just put together a blooper reel of me just being like, "Fuck, sorry, Randy." Oh my god! Or imitate what it sounds yes. like. Like tell the listeners what it sounds like when I make a mistake for you. So, uh, it'll usually be something like, "Welcome back to Laughing in the Dark." The pet. Fuck. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, Randy. It's one a.m. I've been working for twelve hours. Yeah. I have to be up at four a.m. I am exhausted. I'm gonna try and do this one more time. Bear with yeah. me. Yeah. Welcome back to Laughing in the Dark. Like, yeah. And you fucking nail it. Like you when you when you go on these long diatribes of how how much your current existence needs to stop rolling <laughs> and become a you sleeping. <laughs> yeah. It's it like you dial in, you click in right then. You're like, okay, this has to be it, or I'm gonna go insane. Yeah, and exactly. You pull it off. You yeah, we pull it off. There's sometimes like um, I moved to this apartment in Long Beach, whatever, however many months ago, and right. I can hear traffic like any place that I'm sitting yeah. in my apartment. I can hear traffic. I've tried to start recording in my bathroom so that oh, sure. it's like as dulled as possible, but it's still like paper thin walls. Yeah. So I'll just be sitting there and just I'll have to like re-record a part because I can hear like an ambulance go by or, you know, <laughs> people talking. It's yeah, annoying. That. Yep. I know exactly what you're talking about. I used to make little videos uh, back when I lived in Long Beach and I had to re-record a bunch of the vocal tracks because there's just like fucking neighbors in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just paper thin right. walls is just a Long Beach thing, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. the graded doors. That's been... Yeah. Yeah. It feels like, or maybe that's distinctly like LA, Southern California, those types of doors. You know what I'm talking about? The big, the big metal screen doors. Yeah. 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 I had one on my, on my Long Beach house. I have I, one too. Yeah. That's, that's pretty common. Um, 
bars on windows as you go north of 7th start to become pretty common. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, I mean, Long Beach is a rad city, don't get me wrong, but it also has its problems. Yeah. So, well, uh, I didn't think of the screen door as like a bad thing. I feel like right. it's just like a distinctive part of that area. Like everyone has it. Oh, for sure. Everyone's like you see it in a movie and you're like, oh, that's probably Southern California. Like, yeah, actually, you know, that's, that's a very fair point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very Southern California look now that I think about it. Yeah. It totally, like I never would have thought that before I lived there, but mm-hmm. anyway, well, um, I don't remember the topics that we made for this. <laughs> I've been drinking wine for like three and a half hours. <laughs> Perfect. I've That's... been watching um that haunting show. Have you seen this? Oh, the haunting of Bly Manor. Yes. Have you watched um, it? I've watched like the first half of the first episode. Yes. And I do like it. It's the same dude who did Haunting of Hill House. Yes. Well, yeah. and like they they pulled like the American Horror Story. Like it's the same actors. Yeah. 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 And I was kind of I was actually just I mean I know you only watched half of the first episode, but I was just thinking. I think it's the same house as in season one. That wouldn't shock me even a little bit. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. I don't know if like this is the perspective of someone that works at a locations agency. So I actually look at the like house that's used in a, in right. a TV show, you know, mm-hmm. but I was watching. I'm like, I think it's the same. I think it's the same one, but I don't want to look it up because I don't want to see any spoilers. Oh, right. You right, know, right, right. Would you be able to figure that out through means that, like, not other people would know? As a locations agent? Yeah. Not really. Like, did you scope that shit out? No? Okay. I mean, not really. I could ask. I mean, it's basically like if it's a house that we rep and we worked on it, I could ask other agents and be like, did we okay. work on this show? And they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> you know, or no. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> yeah, we did. We uh, we wrap one of the houses from um, American Horror Story. I forget what season oh, right. it is, but it's like okay. the main American Horror Story house. The murder house. Image. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a that's an image house. So we wrap that house. Okay. That's cool. We wrap cool. some of the places in um, you season two in L.A. Oh, okay. Uh, so you'll right. be watching it, and you're like, <laughs> oh, we wrap this place. And that, that's that's Finders Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. We this is one of our spots. <laughs> but no, I feel like just because of that, I actually look at the location to like, I don't know. It's something that my um, my eyes are open to. So I'm right. curious. It looks similar. Um, I I found those topics. Yes. I've got them here. Yes. Um. So and and namely being uh rejected mini sounds. I don't know if that's something oh, that want to go yeah. into or not. Yeah, rejected minisodes. Yeah. Uh, is that our first topic? That's the first one that I wrote uh, to you was yeah, rejected okay. minisodes. If there were any, if you want to talk about them. Um, I mean, I here's the thing. I don't receive the minisodes. So the way oh, that it right. goes, it gets emailed into our, our inbox, but right. my assistants read them. Either Sarah right. or this season I brought on my friend Haley, very good friend of mm-hmm. mine. Um, to kind of help Sarah out because Sarah was like kind of overwhelmed. Okay. So they were both doing it. I think there were some kind of funny responses, but you know, this we- this year has been so weird for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. what's crazy for is sure. like we recorded all of the minisodes like in January, February, like at the very beginning of this That's, year. Yeah, you had them all done at the beginning of the season. They were done. Like my, yeah. our main focus this season was we cut the episodes in half. We made it down to 13 right. episodes. That was the first choice we made before we knew a fucking pandemic was coming. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's right. That yeah. was the plan because uh, basically we had been, especially me, I had been running myself ragged for the first yeah. two seasons on this show. Mm hmm. And for this one, I kind of realized, I was like, you know what? This is a passion project. This is supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a perfectionist. I want it to be perfect or as close to perfect as possible. But also, this is killing me. Like, this is supposed to be fun and it's killing me. So uh, I made the choice to cut the episodes in half and just do 13. 
lucky number 13. Yeah. Um, and I recorded 13 minisodes by the end of February. It was just like, the goal was like, we're going to finish quick and we're going to be strong, have like 13 mm-hmm. strong episodes and then put a lot of focus into like promo stuff around Halloween yeah. time. That was the plan. Mm-hmm. And then. <laughs> and it's it's funny you mentioned that, too, because the first few episodes where you're out and about, I mean, the fucking Winchester house was nothing but a telltale sign that you were on to some really fucking rad shit this year. Yeah. Like you had you, to to have that be in the first half of the season. That was a huge indicator that you're like, I'm fucking going for it. Yeah. And uh, then everything happened. Then everything <laughs> happened. And and that's what really sucks because you're you're totally right. And I, I think I even said this to you that I was like, I'm doing 13 episodes, but each one is going to be like awesome. A banger. Yeah. Like I want um, I think I even intended on recording extra episodes just in case something didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. And then I could like go somewhere else and have a backup. And like, we kind of just, it was like the best laid plans. That's what this year was. Yeah, it was us planning. Absolutely. Like we're not going to be stressed out. It's going to be fun. We're going to be, it's going to be all awesome content. Oh, and I also had a Patreon at the beginning of this season. <laughs> I think for, I remember you talking to me about that. Yeah. For a very short time, I had a Patreon, even in the off season. And I would write basically the same, the, the way that I write episodes is basically writing a report, like a story. Yeah. And you can tell when you're listening to the podcast that I'm reading, you know, an essay that I've written about this place. Yeah. So basically on the Patreon I would find other places that I can't visit for one reason or another. Like it's burnt down or like there's no way I'm going to get permission to be there. Like something like that. Oh, okay. And I would research and I would basically write episodes in the off season and post them on my Patreon. But oh, I only I only okay. had like five subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> okay so when i canceled it i like reached out to all five people supporting me on my patreon i was like i'm really sorry but like i don't have the time to do this <laughs> <laughs> i have to work on the actual show which is the same amount of work as this right 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 so it it wasn't gonna work out that's i mean i, I so that kind of gives a little bit of impetus as to how you came up with the uh um the reformatting for the for the season after episode it was five i think was when it went to uh basically Sean Jordan. format yeah yeah i think you're right i think it was five well actually so what happened was um the pandemic hit Right. And that was just starting when we went to the Winchester Mystery House. We right, were the last you guys talking people, about that. We were yeah, we were mm-hmm. the last people allowed there before it was on lockdown. Wow. So that was kind of I mean, that was a cool opportunity. Yeah. Um and then I think one of the episodes the episode with Mike McGee, I remember sitting there on, on Hicks Road. And talking to him about it and being like, well, I hope nothing really comes of this. This like Mm -hmm. flu going around. Like we had no idea what was about to hit. And then I I came back home and I got temporarily laid off the morning after I came back. I remember that. And I was just like, oh my God. And I basically just thought like, okay, laughing in the dark is done. Like, uh-huh. obviously, I can't travel. I can't even leave my bedroom, like, right. let alone go to a haunted place. So I, I gave up for a little bit. And uh-huh. then I'm not someone who gives up. Like, I just can't. Yeah. So I, I just brainstormed for a long time. And what I came up with was like, well, OK, I'm going to do main episodes just like a mini sode. But maybe like I really like having a personal element with the comedian, like 
I love using a local comic anywhere I go. If I'm in Detroit or Chicago or California, Oregon, wherever I'm at, I like to have a local comic because I like to just, first of all, kind of honor the city that way. But also, yeah. yeah, but I also like to have someone who might have grown up there and been like, oh, my brothers used to tell me this story or like, oh, we used to come here as kids. And like, I love hearing that story. Like, so I remember in um, the episode in Traverse City with Ben Max, for example, he was saying, oh, yeah, like me and my buddies used to come here and like we were just amateur ghost hunters. Like, I love that. I love having that element yeah. of like this person grew up here, has a history here. And this story has been a part of their personal story. Yeah, And that's cool. Like, I like that. So for um, the pandemic, I was like, well, I can't travel. But you know what I'm going to do? I want to have that personal element in there. I'm going to ask these comics where they're from. Mm. And then I'll just research a place that they're from so they can kind of, you know, join in in that same way and say, oh, yeah, I've been here. So in this season, I had that experience, especially with like Kate Murphy comes to mind. Yeah. Where Kate Murphy was great. Yeah. That was such a fun episode. Yeah. We did the Minnesota State Prison. Yeah. And she had actually been there and ghost hunted yeah. there and had experiences there. Like, I love that. So fucking cool. It's so yeah. cool. <laughs> That's so much better than just choosing a random ghost story and telling it to a comedian. When you tell them a story that's based in their home, where yeah. they grew up or where they live, there's that just that extra personal element to it that really appeals to me. It builds so, a stronger connection between you and the comic and the comic in their city. Exactly. You know. And even if it's a place where they haven't been, like the episode with Sean Jordan, when we talked about um, what what was that? What was the name of the woods in that one? That was Un Memento. It was this like in the woods. There's <laughs> uh, Sika Hollow. Yeah, Shika Hollow. She is Shisha. Shisha Hollow. Shisha. Shisha Hollow. So what? Oh, oops. I just. Oh, no. Did I just freeze? Fuck. You froze. Yeah, do you want me to leave and come back or just um nah, just keep going. Okay. I mean it's up to you. What do you want to do? I don't care. Okay. Um keep keep going. Okay, so uh in Shisha Hollow with Sean Jordan, I remember he he had no idea what I was talking about. He'd never been there, but it's from his home state. So it's like uh it still kind of has that personal element to it because it's like you're learning something new about where you grew up. Yeah. And that's fun too. I like that. Uh, yeah, I, and that's that's again that was that was one of the things that I definitely appreciated a lot um, about the season was that the the comic hearing about something that they grew up around but just didn't didn't ever really know that much about uh, yeah and you could hear that just even deeper connection being forged between them and where they come from yeah you know. That's that was that was a cool thing to experience this season. Yeah, so. it's very cool. And and it yeah. happens too in other seasons, like when you're there in person. I, yeah. I remember having experiences with people where they're like, you know, I've passed this so many times and I never would have thought about it until yep. now I have this whole story behind this random place that's right where I live, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's very cool. That's very, very cool. Um, so with all that said. Uh, I had mentioned earlier how big and bad the season was was projected to be. What were some of the places that you were either considering or had locked down for this season? Oh, man. You know, um, I mean, Winchester Mystery House was such a huge get. That was a, that was get. a get. <laughs> yeah. A huge get. It was such a huge get. It was so rad that they said yes in the first place yeah. let alone for free uh-huh. like and to have a like this private, private tour, tour for free unreal yeah um that was very cool and even in my own mind i was like wow this is really going to be setting the bar like mm-hmm. this is really setting the bar for the places i want to go but um i had a really secure job and a really flexible work schedule and I was planning on doing a lot of travel this season. Yeah. Um. So one of the places I have always wanted to go 
my whole life, but especially for the show, is New Orleans. Oh, so sure. that yeah. was a play. I was going to do something related to voodoo. Maybe there's a Lafayette. I think it's called the Lafayette Cemetery or something similar, even though we okay. did an episode like that in Oregon with, by the same name. Um, but I wanted to do something there. I wanted to go to uh, Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Um, but there were several places. This was going to be a year of travel, ironically, which, of course, yeah. the year had <laughs> different plans. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, uh, definitely uh, made made decisions for us. It did. Yeah. So that that really put a damper on things because that that really was the goal for this year was to do a lot of traveling. And um, mm-hmm. I, I feel like. Especially with like mini sods, we get callers from all over the place Mm -hmm. i feel like they always are like oh if you're ever in like connecticut or if you're ever in wherever like in so many different places and i'm always like god i wish i could like that would be awesome and that's Mm -hmm. what i really wanted to do this season which i unfortunately was not able to do right 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 i so provided the world does get better (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah. for next year where do it you will. think it will it will provide yes um so when when everything improves and we're able right. to do th- do fun things again uh where would you like to go i mean i I know that you had listed a couple but i feel like once you have that freedom uh going real big would be i would think something that you'd want to do absolutely right? definitely yeah. You know where I want to go? Huh. I would want to go to Ireland. Yeah. Oh, lots of haunted shit out in Ireland. Yeah. We um yeah. we just did an episode of What's More Metal where uh, it's already come out by the time this this wrap up came out, this episode would have come out what? 2 weeks prior. Uh it would have come out on the 19th of October. So yeah. Yep. Uh if you go back in What's More Metal to October 19th, I'm a guest on that episode. Yeah. And I talked about I was to to select um the most metal haunted place. Right. And I chose a place called Leap Castle in Ireland. Mm-hmm. And it sounded so fucking cool. And I wanted to go there so bad. Um mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean it's down there's, you know, the classic female ghost, which I feel like is in, in every haunted place. There's some ghostly oh, yeah woman so in there's victorian a, clothing 100%. in victorian clothing um she's holding a dagger she's like wearing yep. red uh so there's that there they have some grotesque faced uh hunched <laughs> creature on four legs with like a decaying face or something that i want to yep. see because that sounds great uh-huh. yep um there's Into a it. Oh, there there was a haunted chapel on the grounds where uh-huh. a priest was murdered by his brother and uh, wherein they found a hidden torture chamber slash dungeon full of bones. So that's a place I want to go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I want to spend a Sounds night fun. in the Leap Castle in Ireland, Okay, preferably with a hilarious Irish comedian. Dan Weber says Dylan he knows Morin. who Dylan Morin. Are you familiar? I'm not. He is a extremely hilarious stand up comic from from Dublin, oh. uh, and he has a show that might may or may not be on Netflix anymore called Black Books. Okay, um, he's one of, like one of the funniest comics that I've I've seen him live. I got to go see him when he was here one, uh, a couple years ago. He's he's a big comic. So it's it's slightly more pie in the sky, but Dylan Morin would be excellent. Really? Is yeah. he Dublin based still or is he LA based? I believe he's Dublin based. I'm oh sure right. still there. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know some agents in London that um okay. I mean, and that's where I'll probably go to. I would probably do oh, yeah. either way, it would be very cool to do a season abroad. You know, Absolutely. just like just yeah, in London, Ireland, Scotland, Italy. I mean, that would be very cool. God, you, there's so many good ones you can do. 
Oh my god. So, I, I mean, you could you could probably do an entire season in London alone. Oh, probably. Yeah. Probably. Jack the um, Ripper, The Tower of London. Yeah. There's some good ones like there. Any old pub. <laughs> yeah, any yeah. Literally anywhere. Any anywhere. home. <laughs> Any home, any like washroom, it doesn't matter. Like it's yeah, it's haunted. There's for ghosts. Sure. There's They're ghosts haunted. there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's where I'd love to go. Cool. And also well, anywhere. I mean, where? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, if you were to do a European tour, uh, a I would probably come with you. Totally. Um, and B, I would probably just record all of it and be there. Uh, which would be dope. That'd and be fun. yes, we have to go everywhere. We've got to go yeah. all over Europe. We've got to we go should to all do the it. countries. Why don't we yeah. do that? Yeah. We let's should. That plan. I'm yeah, that. let's do that. That'd be really fun. And okay. then we could have a bunch of BTS filmed. Like whenever things are getting hilarious, you just pull out your camera. And yep. You're like, you know, it was something fun. Taking care of it. Taking care of it. That'll be, Me and too. it's a vacation that we will write off Fuck as a yeah, business it's a expense. Vacation. Yeah, absolutely yeah. we will <laughs> holy shit It'll exactly be, oh, i'll be able to write the whole thing off exactly oh that's so nice <laughs> yeah i have an llc dude yeah me too so, yeah i mean exactly so i mean that doesn't suck that's uh, a good idea season four is gonna be dope season four speaking of season four yeah um maybe we should talk about our plans for season four i think we just did <laughs> yeah well i mean that'd be nice if that could happen next year yeah okay that's true if that can be 2021 dope oh i am yeah. fucking here for it but it won't be um it won't be what no. i will say for next season or at least for next year for 2021 for anyone listening mm-hmm. um 2020 was fucked up for yeah. everyone like you all Everybody, like anyone yeah. listening to that is like this is you know they agree like no one's listening, like being like, I don't know. I don't see the issue. Like everyone had a tough year, you know? I don't see why everybody's so bothered. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it. been a great year for me. <laughs> Nothing much different from me here. Um, I always wear a mask to Target. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So because of that, I don't want to make any promises for 2021. Because I will say like, you know, yeah, it, it's it's too much pressure on me to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna deliver this content and not know what the fuck is happening with like <laughs> we're gonna a second be in wave. ten dungeons. Yeah, like yeah, I don't know what is gonna happen. I would love to be in ten dungeons next season. Are right. you kidding me? That'd oh be fucking God. awesome. But you know, we can't guarantee that's going to happen. Fair. So um I do know that one of my goals very soon is uh-huh. to shoot a pilot episode of Laughing in okay. the Dark as a TV show. Yeah. That is what is up and coming. Okay. Um, so I'm, I, again, like I work at a locations agency. I won't say the name of it, but um, my boss is is well familiar with this podcast mm. and is a fan and likes Good. the show. That um helps. yes and so he is going to support me using one of our haunted locations which we rep several um cuz we we rep so many like mansions and you know random places all through uh California so it's yeah. kind of a good it's a good place to be yeah, so yeah, i think we're sure. you, we're going to have a very cool location and um i'm going to get a very funny comedian and get a really good story and i what i want to do is record an episode of me in the haunted place with the comedian. And I want to then, when I tell the story, I want to have it animated. Right. That is the plan. And ideally I would like to have a different animation style for each episode so that Mm -hmm. it's kind of like a varied mix of, you know, styles of comedy and location and, the art style of of the animation, all of that, I just think will be interesting and fun. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. Yeah, so that's that's the plan. We're gonna put that on YouTube and get as many viewers as possible. So that's, I think, the goal for twenty twenty one. That's the main focus. Get a pilot shot. Get a pilot done, 
and perfect and edited and beautiful and then promote the living fuck out of it yeah. and get as many people. Because the thing is, is like when you talk to a network and you go, hey, look, I have this really great concept and it's going to be great. They don't care about the concept. They care about the numbers. Yeah. So as long as you can show, look, this many people give a shit. This many people would want to see this as a TV show. If you can do that, then you can sell the show. Right. So and then we get right. to make it. And then people get to see it and enjoy it, and it'll be fun. Oh, is that how that works? I think so. <laughs> I hope so, because that's the plan, man. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. No, that's going to be really fucking fun. That's going to be a super, super fun project, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, in, I mean, maybe we combine that. Maybe instead of choosing one of our locations in L.A., we do that in the castle in Ireland, you know? Yeah. Who knows? That'd be fucking cool. Oh, the very pilot cool. episode being international. That would oh, be man. Nuts. That'd be very cool. That'd be super fucking cool. Very, very cool. Uh huh. That's so that is kind of my focus for 2021. I don't want to okay. put too much pressure on myself to create an entire season of content yeah. before I do that. Although I will miss writing and uh, performing for the episode. But then again, like, this season, I feel like I was a little let down. I mean, I tried to deliver the best content, I, as always, that I possibly yeah, could. for sure. But it's just, it lost that element of being physically in the haunted place. I, I mean, yeah. But when it comes down to it, we have to live here in reality, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And, I, I mean the best that you could have done was go to a place like you know in in the couple outdoor episodes you've had like that was theoretically possible but even then that can only be done so many times yeah and i don't i mean there's no way you would have you wouldn't have been able to get somebody who was comfortable doing it yeah because i mean at the time that everything was happening you know people were fucking terrified rightly rightfully so right and then None of those locations would have been incredible. I mean, I don't know. The outdoor shows are always great, but going to like the Winchester how the Winchester Mystery House or or fucking haunted prison, like all the fucking places you've been, um, I think it would have been really limited to the potential that you would have had. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? I agree, and and that's that's part of why I chose to do it the way that I did because I did yeah. consider that too. I was like, well, I could do episodes that are like. Yeah, they're all wood in the woods or they're all wherever. But then it's like you're when you limit yourself that much, you end up having to settle for content that's just not frankly interesting to me. Right. And I want to make a show that I would want to listen to. So the content for every single episode is something that before I even started recording, I had to write that episode, which means I yeah. spent days researching that topic. Right. And if it's not enough to look at or it's not, if it's boring to me, I don't want to do that. Right. And I mean, 13 episodes of hiking. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Not as interesting. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Although, man, I would have loved to be hiking all all year (laughs) instead of sitting in my bed, recording these episodes, writing and recording (laughs) all from my bed in my pajamas, probably in the same pajamas too. Just full on quarantine (laughs) lockdown style. Like, all right, I haven't worn makeup in months. (laughs) (laughs) Let's fucking make the show. All right. Today we're going to be in a, you know, or one of the episodes too, we got to go back in time. That was kind of fun. The Chicago episode. Right. Where the girl who was possessed, uh, Lorancy uh, Venom, uh-huh. was her name. The the one of the first cases ever recorded of um, possession of another human being. That's very okay, interesting right. to me. That's something that you had really going for you this season. Is that you could tell a story about anywhere and exactly. not have to worry about it. I that wasn't was, limited. Yeah. yeah that was a really cool part of this season. Yeah, it was. I liked that too. Um, yeah, if 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 anything, that was a huge redeeming quality. Yeah, I thought so. And and actually, and it made it easier for me to write because I got to choose 
oh, this is the best place. I didn't have to think about, am I going to get permission to be there? Am I going to be able to do this? Like it was, right. able, I was just able to just go with it, which is great. All right. If you were to choose a favorite episode this season, can you think of what it would be? I really, really, really liked uh, Jess's. I, I love the finale. Um, yeah. I thought that was super interesting. The Cecil liked, Hotel one? Yes. I thought that one was super interesting. Um, Jessa has so much life experience that it made everything that she said just like that much better you know yeah to to hear everything that she's been through and then have this kind of really it's a really affirming belief system um yeah brings a lot of peace around that subject in my opinion yeah but, uh yeah i would say hers followed very closely by uh kate murphy's episode yeah that was a good one too i agree 11 yeah i thought that one was i agree great. you know what i i really liked the episode with um jesse gavin the one uh, oh, she, sure. the where was that one taking place? Ju- in Jer- no, not Jersey. It was in New that York. Was where are you, Jesse? Oh, just saw it and I lost it. Hinsdale House. Hinsdale House. Yeah, it was in New York. Yeah. The Hinsdale mm-hmm. House. The uh, it was kind of like not quite Amityville horror, but very similar. Mm-hmm. And then he told the story of when uh, he saw a ghost when he was uh, in his apartment. Right. That right, whole thing. And yeah. and I and I just felt we had like a really good rapport and it went really well. And that's like actually another interesting challenge of this season was that in um seasons uh, prior, I could actually meet the comedian and get a drink and kind of like get to know each other and then start recording. So right. by the time we're recording, we're kind of buddies and then we're talking about this place. Right. For this season, right. a lot of the comics I had never met them before. And I'm right, basically, like, I, go ahead. no, it's just like, I'm basically like cold calling yeah. someone and being like, Hey, you want, you want to hear a story? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's basically what it was. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm going to bum you out for a little bit. Or are you ready? Uh, <laughs> go. Like it was very awkward, you know? And I didn't try to make it sound awkward. No. And, and actually Jessa, the last episode is a great example of that because you, you like you picking up the phone with her, I believe was the first time you guys had spoken to one another. Yeah. Besides Instagram messaging. Yeah. Because after that, I I don't think it made it into the episode, but you know, at the very, very end, you're like, it was great to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was the first time you guys spoke and the rapport that the two of you built in I mean, you guys, you sounded very natural after a couple of minutes. And by yeah. the end, I mean, you guys sounded great together. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, um, yeah, I thought that was, a, that was a strength that you had this season for sure, was getting people to buy in to whatever it was immediately. You yeah. That. I think you did that pretty well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I found some would you rathers because I feel like um, every year now, now this is the third year we've done this. We can say every year we do this um, <laughs> really, but every year we do this, it's kind of just like a phone call where we're like, wasn't this nuts? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> like, so <laughs> I thought it might be kind of fun to not have to focus on just work and talk, sure. about, just play like a horror game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Into I found, that. Yes, I found several would you rather questions uh, from several different websites that are kind of creepy or horror themed. And I thought that might be a kind of a fun game. Dope. Let's do it. OK, um, let's do the t- the first one here says, would you rather play with a cursed Ouija board or spend a weekend in a haunted cabin in the woods? Ooh, Ouija board. Cursed Ouija board. Curse Ouija board for sure. And why? Um, because I lean skeptic, and I uh, I don't lean being inedible to bears. Mm. So I'm going with cursed Ouija board because if that's just here in my studio, uh, I'll burn the motherfucker. Um, whereas I can't do that to a bear. So there's that. You you mean like a ghost bear or? <laughs> <laughs> 
You have to be more specific. Okay, you mean like a living bear then? <laughs> I mean like a living bear, yes. Okay. That, I, I that didn't know where we woods. were going. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I don't know. I think I would take the weekend in a haunted cabin though. Okay. Because it's very like Airbnb and you just get to be in like a different place. I think sure. I just want a vacation. I think I think that's, <laughs> I think that's all I'm looking at. Because I'm like, oh, I'd take the vacation. Oh, it's haunted? Who gives a shit? I go to tons of haunted places. I don't care. I sleep in haunted places all the time. That's fair, actually. I would probably feel more comfortable if I got to do it with you because you'd be like, Randy, it's fucking nothing. Go to seriously, go to sleep. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, I have like from multiple friends. They've told me that I set the standard for things being scary, <laughs> and it makes things <laughs> less scary when I just don't care. But I generally <laughs> don't care, which I think actually makes a lot of comedians like feel more comfortable being on my show with me, because sure. I'm usually just like it's fine, and they're like, "Do you see that?" And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> they're just like. Oh. <laughs> So, all right, I guess if you say it's fine, it's probably fine. Episode five, season two, is that. Which one is that? Minutes or that? That's with, oh, shit. Hold on. You remember I, the number, I, but you don't remember who it's with? You have a weird, sure the way do. your memory works is, like, different Dude, than mine. I am shocked it works at all right now. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, no, I, speci- I do remember, I don't know why I specifically remember the number, but. Uh, Elizabeth Lake with Justin Hoff. Oh, yes. One of my scaredy cats. Oh, my God. It was <laughs> Justin, so funny. So it's funny because, like, when people ask for an episode where the comedian gets scared, I always suggest Becky Bronstein in season one yep. and yep. Justin Hoff in season two. Yep. And that's like, I don't have that for season three because we weren't I know. physically in the haunted place. And that's what sucks. Because I wonder who would have gotten scared. You know, two of my Kate comments. Murphy. You think Kate Murphy? Really? She's already I, I been mean, a ghost if, hunter. No, that's true. Yeah, probably not Kate Murphy. Uh, definitely oh, not Jessa. No, definitely or, not Jessa. Um, <laughs> Karen Rontowski, I don't think, would get scared. That's kind of her shit, too. Sean, actually. Yeah, you think Sean? Yeah, I maybe. think Sean pro- would have got pretty freaked out. But he wouldn't have shown it. Sean plays things pretty cool. That's true. Rebecca Rush um, is one of the people that actually we physically went to the haunted place. Huh. You know what? Maybe Gabe. Gabe, Gabe might have got it. I was just yes. going to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. I bet you it would have been Gabe. Of, of yeah, everyone. I could see Gabe, Gabe or Mike Kaplan. Bit. I could see Mike Kaplan getting freaked out. Mm-hmm. Okay. I could definitely see Mike getting freaked out. I'm gonna my vote would be Mike or Gabe. Okay. Yeah. I'm with yep. you on that. Yep. Um, yeah. Man, that would have been fun. The yeah. scaredy episodes are the best. They're so they're so much fun to listen to. They're so Jesus funny. And Christ. I and I've told Justin too that I suggest him as one of my comics that gets scared and he thinks that's funny. <laughs> he, he knows. All right, so would you rather be trapped in a house with a murderer, but you can't hear anything, or trapped in a house with a murderer, but you can't see anything? Jesus Christ. (laughs) I told you I found good ones. (laughs) It's a season finale. This is supposed to be fun. (laughs) Trapped with a murderer. I'm either blind or deaf. Mm -hmm. God damn. Uh, I know what I'd pick. Do you want me to go first since you went first yeah, last time? I think I might have picked the same thing you did. Uh, well, let's find out. I okay. would choose to give up my hearing. I'd want to see. Oh, give up your hearing. Yeah. Is that not what you were okay. going to say? No, I was going to say give up my sight. Oh, my God. What? Why? It is because it is when you're okay. When you're in a house, if it's just you and the murderer. Right. You have to think about this. Theoretically, there mm-hmm. are two things in that house that can make noise, right? There's one thing that's going to make noise that's not you, and that's the other person. That is, so, like, what if like a bird hit the window or like the creaking, just like the house settling? I, I like, I get that, but I also like if if you're trapped in a house with a murder, it depends on the house. First off, are we talking like 
a new house or a shitty rundown haunted house. Also, it's um, like, do you have pets? Like, are they there? Right. Like, there there are a lot of factors that go into accurately answering that question, but I feel right. like it is much easier to be quiet than it is to uh, be invisible. Okay. And I, don't know. I would rather make oh, it harder for them. I get what you're saying. So, like, you want to be able to hear yourself to make sure you're not making too much noise. Yeah, I want to be able to hear myself, and I want to be able to hear, like, you can, you can you know, like tighten yourself into a corner so you can't see anything or you can like, he can't, the murderer can't come up from behind you, but cornering yourself is also a bad strategy for escape. I was going to say, yeah. Cause then if you, you know, get found, like you're fucked. The only, that's really the only thing that you can do with vision is prevent yourself from getting cornered. But once you step away from a wall, if you're walking down a hallway you're not hearing shit behind you, so they could very easily sneak up and get you. You have to constantly be looking every single direction. Which, if you're panicked and you're constantly looking everywhere, you're gonna get you're gonna start getting fucking dizzy from co- like just changing your your line of sight so often. So That's reminding me too of another element that you'd have to keep in mind. Does the murderer know which sense you don't have? Right. Or do they not know? Right. Because if they like. I would want to be able to see what's going on. I think I have a shitty sense of hearing and smell anyway. I think I have better sight than anything, which sucks because I'm nearsighted. <laughs> like yeah. I still need glasses. Same, like, <laughs> I'm nearsighted and I've had tubes in both ears twice. So Me I'm too, as a baby. Regardless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had tubes as a baby too. So I don't have like an amazing sense of hearing. Yeah. I've never had a good sense of smell, but I think it's because I like smoked cigarettes for as long as I did. Yeah. Um, which I have quit, but I still don't think my sense Yeah, the smell doesn't like, come back. Yeah, I don't think it's, like, amazing. Um, what else? But my sight, I think, I, I think I've always been someone who needs to see what's going on. Also, like, what time of day is it? Can you see inside? Like, what, what? there are so many factors here. Oh, you're saying, like, if it's, like, late, it doesn't really matter? If it's you can't dark, see anyway. yeah, like, if it's dark, if you're in a dark house... I don't night, think I like think your eyes would adjust. Like they dilate to like for survival. Well, yeah, I'm I'm not saying that if they wouldn't adjust, but there's only so much they can, you know. Like at some point, your vision's not going to be incredibly useful. I just cracked there. Um. Anyway, I still I would go. Uh, I would give it my hearing, but I he- yeah. I think it both would be uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. Here's one. You suspect that you're being stalked by an evil demon. Mm. How do you get rid of it? You have three options. Either you, A, go to a witch and perform a ceremony to expel the demon. Okay. B, go to church, talk to a priest, and stock up on holy water. Okay. Or C, get on a flight and hope the demon can't find you in Siberia. Okay. What would you choose? Uh well, uh C I don't think would work. Okay, why? Um, why? Yeah. I mean, if movies are anything to believe, traveling doesn't get rid of demons. Okay. And neither are stories <laughs> that I've heard about getting rid of demons. I don't think traveling uh works really at all. Um. So the other options are go to a witch or go to a church. Yeah, it's witch or religion. I I'm torn on this because the existence of a demon necessitates entertaining that uh religion could be a correct avenue to go down. But if there's anything that life and history has taught me is that it's a bad idea to get religion involved in fucking anything. So I'm going with the witch. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with the witch. Yeah, you know, I don't know what I would choose. I don't know. I, I also think... have plenty of witch friends, so like... Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, I I probably would go to a witch first or someone that is... because For that exact reason, just because they're my friends. <laughs> right. Just be like, do you know some kind of a little, like, I don't know, a little spell doohickey thing that you do? I don't mean to be offensive. <laughs> Whatever it is that you guys do, do you want to do Whatever that for me? Whatever it is me? you fucking people believe. 
I have a problem and like maybe you can help me. So you're right. I think that would be my first move just because it's like out of ease. Um, yeah. I think my second move would be to get holy water. I was okay. raised Catholic. There is always going to be that part of me that's like, you need an exorcism. Right. Why don't we yeah. just give it a shot? Like there's times I've like heard demon stories and I'm like, when do you call the priest? Like I'm, right. I right. don't even, I'm not even a religious person per se, but it's like, you got to do it. Just, you got to yeah. get it out of the way. You got to check that box. Yeah. That's what I'd probably do. And then I guess I'd go to Siberia. <laughs> like, <laughs> If, if if all else fails, I guess, fuck it. So you're taking all three. So instead of really answering the question, you just did rank choice. Well, yeah, I just ranked them. I, okay. I, I, think, I think, well, in order Which of- Which uh, Siberia? Yeah, in order. Yeah, I don't think I would ever go to Siberia because I'd rather be haunted by a demon than live in than snow. Live in Siberia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Fair. I would make Fair. peace with the demon if it were between that and going to Siberia, probably. But. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, bro, could you just not bother me when I'm recording? Could you just leave me alone then? Because that'd be dope. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> at certain key times, if you could just fuck off, then you can haunt me <laughs> at other times. And, you know, we'll we'll find a way that works for both of us. Show up in my mirror when I'm brushing my teeth. That's Fucking fine. Whatever. I don't care. That's fine. We'll make silly faces at each other and we'll get through it. Like, <laughs> we're going to make this fun, you and me, and it's going to be great. I, I already have to live with my... What? <laughs> so you can push me down the stairs and I'll say Hail Marys. It'll be a good time. It'll be fine. You know what? Like I have had to make peace with my demons my whole life. Like I <laughs> I'm well versed in this practice. I know exactly how this shit goes, trust me. Fair. Um the last one on here, I think, speaking of making peace with your demons, uh-huh. uh the last one on here is would you rather be possessed by a demon or find out your whole family has been possessed your entire life? And I find this question so hilarious huh. because I would not be shocked for a fucking second if my whole family has been possessed my entire life. So, you know, it's funny because they're I basically do. asking you, hey, so is it you or is it them? Totally. And I'm like, it's them. <laughs> Like for sure, it's yeah, them. they're the problem. That's them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking perfect. Fuck you. Totally. I I'm doing great. Um, <laughs> it's them. Uh, I would also say them because for everybody but my mom, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, there. I mean, that's how I feel. Well, I've always kind of felt. I've always called myself a bit of a black sheep in my family, anyway. Sure. And I say I, I say a bit of just to be like polite. Like I was like a full on black sheep in my family, and it still okay. mostly am. Um. So yeah, if I found out my entire family was possessed, I would be like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I would be really shocked if it was me who was possessed. That would shock me. But. Mm-hmm. I'm like thinking of each individual person and I'm just like, yeah, no, that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love them dearly. Oh, for sure. But they're possessed. Oh, f- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My brother's got Satan inside of him for sure. Yeah. I mean, no I, I don't even think it's evil forces. It's just. They're. Yeah, I would not be shocked. I'd be like, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> that actually explains a lot, to be honest. Yep. That clears a lot yep. up. <laughs> Man. Um, so I have a I have a kind of a a good last question for you from me. Okay. Uh what are you going to do this Saturday, Halloween? This, this Saturday. Halloween. Oh. Well Well this this episode is coming out on Halloween. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> uh you know what? That is to be determined. So I think I might be hanging out with, um, last Halloween, I came home to Detroit to go to one of my best friends got married in a Halloween Mm -hmm. themed wedding on Halloween. And I was a bridesmaid. Um, and so this year it's their one year anniversary on Halloween. And, uh, they were going to have kind of a little, a party for their anniversary. Mm -hmm. And, I'm probably going to go to that, at least make an appearance because I'm in the Detroit area um, for my job. I'm here for a long project. Um, mm-hmm. So that's probably what I'm going to do. 
If not, there are a couple like social distancing, like haunted houses out here that oh, sure. one of my friends and I might want to go check out. It's, it's different. This year is unique it's for weird. Halloween. It's very yeah. weird. It's unfortunate that the first the fucking Halloween had to be on a Saturday this year. I know. I know. It, like, and during New Year's, I was so looking forward to that. I was like, oh, Halloween's on a weekend. It's like perfect. It's going to be fucking dope. Turns I out, thought it was going to nope. still be in Fuck LA. It'll be warm. You can dress like a slut and like you're still warm, <laughs> <laughs> which is so great. So, nope, that's not where I'm at. So, okay. Nope. That's fine. Next wow. year. There's still time next year. There is definitely time next year. What about you? What are you doing on Saturday or on Halloween? Uh, I am getting my first tattoo filled in, getting it colored. Okay. Um, and that is all of it. That's it? That's all I got plans. You're not <laughs> I mean, even going to watch Hocus Pocus? I'll probably watch a movie or two. Yeah. I might watch Halloween. I just watched Halloween, the 2018 one, the other day. Oh, my um, God. I haven't seen... Wait, the 2018 one. Oh, that's yeah. very recent. Yeah. I was thinking of the um, Rob Zombie version. Oh. That uh, was a good one. That's a I want to rewatch one. that. I want to rewatch Have you that. seen the 2018 one? I haven't yet. Oh Wait, my no. God, Sarah. Is it 2018 or 2019? The one with um Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah. That was 2018? That was 2018. I still haven't seen it. Buddy. I know. I have Buddy. to. You need have to rent to. it. Go to Blockbuster or Hollywood Video. Blockbuster does not exist anymore except get, for in Get a VHS. Oregon. Get the VHS. <laughs> yep. It's on it. Get it Super you. 8. <laughs> <laughs> get a Betamax. Mhm. Yep. <laughs> you're you're going to want to watch this on Blu-ray. This is going to be you won't believe this. Um Yeah, please do get it. I I would imagine it might be on the pay-per-view in your hotel. Probably. Yeah, I'll watch and it's it. Fucking incredible. Really? Yeah. I just rewatched um the original Halloween Ugh. over lockdown. It, well, uh. no. I feel differently. Um, so one of my very good friends had never seen it. And uh-huh. he was like, yeah, like, you know, it's a horror classic. I know you're a huge fan of horror. Do you want to watch it with me? And like the lockdown style where you're like texting through the movie, you know? Uh-huh. And I was like, yeah, I'll watch it with you. I'm not like a huge fan of the original Halloween. Unpopular okay. opinion. Not one of my favorites. I you know okay. John Car- Carpenter is like famous for it, but. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, uh, I'm not a huge fan. And through the first two thirds of it, I was like, man, I don't know why I hated on this movie so much. Maybe it's because I watched it when I was like 14. <laughs> like mm-hmm. That could have had something to do with it. But it's just towards the end when Jamie Lee Curtis like is just making the shittiest choices that I just get so annoyed. Okay, that's yeah. fair. I get that. That's only that's that's it for me. Um, if that was your problem with the first one, God damn it, are you going to love the new one? Really? So it kind of oh, fixes yeah. that. Okay. Oh my God. And, and this is giving nothing away, um, because it's discovered in like the first 15 minutes of the movie. So the new Halloween is a direct sequel to the first one. It, it, it does, it ignores everything yeah. that all the other Halloween movies have have put up. Um, so Jamie Lee has grown into an old woman, and she has a kid who has who has a kid, so she's got grandkids, and she lives in the middle of the woods, and she has like a basement bunker full of weapons, and she has set up this whole compound uh, to practice with a firing range uh, and like perimeter lights and security. All, her whole house is rigged with all of these fucking like weird traps and shit because she's fucking waiting for it to happen again. Whoa! So she get she goes complete one eighty from that person and just turns into like this doomsday prepper. And yeah. it's so fucking cool. That sounds really good. It's yeah, dope. I can't believe I haven't watched it. Like I just I don't know why I haven't really. But yeah, <sighs> yeah, can't recommend it enough. It's amazing. I, I'll, I'll have to watch that. I would like mm-hmm. to also rewatch the Rob Zombie version because I remember really loving that. But sometimes I really loved a movie and then I go to rewatch it and I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Yeah, I get that. Um, if you do watch the director's cut, 
Okay. Because it's a lot more brutal than the theatrical release. And Rad. Deservedly so. Like it, it, it. I think the choices that he made in the director's cut established Michael Myers to be a way bigger fucking psychopath than you ever thought. Right. Um, Is it so, yeah. normal to be attracted to Michael Myers? <laughs> 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 which one think? no any of them but oh. even like the original like there's something about just like he seems strong first of all okay you can't see his face so you just assume he could be hot under there okay and he's just he's very patient he's very patient but he's also very uh determined like he's gonna get okay. what he wants and oh. he's not easily shooketh. He's <laughs> is that weird? It's kind of uh, hot. Okay. Yeah. I see where you're going. <laughs> right. Uh for the reasons that you said, no. Okay. As a <laughs> whole, yeah, still fucking weird. <laughs> really? Really? Like it's you can find those qualities in people who don't murder teenagers. Right. No, I'm just saying there's something about just but a I dangerous man who's also patient. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be some I want stand. someone who's dangerous, but just a good listener. I just you know? want someone who will fucking <laughs> kill me. <laughs> there's got to be someone listening who's like, I get it. I think he's hot. <laughs> Probably. There's got to be. I just want someone who will sneak into the back of my house and cut my throat. I just want someone who will just watch me. Like, when I'm just staring wistfully out the window, I want to just see him staring back. You know? <laughs> That's what I want. I just want someone to appear between my sheets in the lawn and then disappear when I do a double take. Is that Did that happen? In the movie, they, he like he like appear. Yeah, they're, they're looking down, and there's like clotheslines with sheets. Oh, that up. I remember. I thought yeah. you meant like in the bed. Actually, like no, 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 no. Yeah, no. I was like, I think that's Freddy, who's also yeah. my Freddy. <laughs> I'm not like attracted to Freddy, but I'm just. Saying. I've also got a thing for burn victims. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh man. It's true. I don't know. There's something about. I get it. I get where you're coming from. Who do you think is uh, the sexiest murder villain or horror oh, villain? Shit. Uh, sexiest horror villain. Probably. Oh god damn! I don't know. I. The fucking two dudes from Scream. Okay. I haven't I watched that movie in a long time. I'd have to rewatch that. Well, Matthew Lillard is one of them. He's not a bad looking dude. I but don't that's remember you who can played see, Billy. But he wears a scream mask. Oh, uh, okay. So you're talking like the character. Like not the actor, like the actual character. Yeah. <sighs> this is tough. I don't. I don't fully know either, but so far I'm feeling like it might be Michael Myers. I get that. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, I guess I would, I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, you I know, don't know who's that I can yes this with you. Who? Um. Uh. Hannibal. Say Lecter. that again. You cut out. Hannibal Lecter. Oh. He's kind of okay. sexy because he's dangerous and intelligent, and he like can manipulate you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I've had so many toxic relationships, Randy. <laughs> I'm really into sociopaths. Let I just, just love, like, I love a man who will either kill me or just, like, make me think I'm crazy. I want someone to just, like, gaslight the shit out of me. And then, yeah, and then always is threatening to, like, literally eat me. <laughs> like, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. It's true, Jesus though. Jesus fucking Christ. There are a lot of sexy horror villains. Uh, I don't know. One of the vampires. 
Oh yeah, like from True Blood, or yeah. you th- or Nosferatu. No. I don't know what you're into. No, no, not the monster <laughs> ones. No, no, no. True Blood. Like the, uh, yeah. Bill or who's the other one? Bill Skarsgård, right? Is it Skarsgård? No, no. I think it's I think Peter Skarsgård's in True Blood. No, no. The character's name is there's oh. either remember Sookie and Bill or the blonde guy. There are listeners right now fucking shouting at their radios. I I think I only remember Bill because I was Team Bill. I thought he was the, the hotter one. So there's Bill Compton and yep. then Jason Stackhouse. No, that's Sookie's brother. Sam Merlotte. Sam Merlot is her boss. Okay. Uh, the Andy b- Bellafle. <laughs> I think that's the cop or something. There's okay. there's another vampire who's blonde. There's Bill or the other guy. Hold on. You clearly hey, didn't people. Wa- watch the show. <laughs> Tweet at us. Um, yeah, right. I don't use Twitter very much. No, I don't either. Oh, is that him? Is it not Ryan? Uh, uh, no, hang on. Uh, it's not Jason Stackhouse because he's blonde. Yeah, but that's Sookie Stackhouse's brother. Shit. I it's think Eric. it is Alex. Eric th- Northman. Okay, yeah, it is a Scars Guard. I fucking knew it was a Scars Guard. Is that. Oh, that's the character, the actor who plays him. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a they're an acting dynasty, and he is a very, very good looking man. I don't um, think so. I would friend zone Eric. I don't think he's hot. But so Bill it's either Compton, Bill, Bill or Eric. Okay. Bill, I'm a huge fan of, but All I have right. found that I am in the minority on that. Most people are team Eric. Uh, I could see why you would be team team Bill. I am absolutely team Eric. Why do you think I would be team Bill? I just that I don't know. It seems like it seems like more your vibe. That's funny because it is. But I wonder how you know. I don't think that you are particularly into like pretty boys. True. That's not to say that Stephen Moyer is a bad looking man. But Alexander Skarsgård is more like traditionally, you know, he's more traditionally good looking. Funny. Is that weird? Yeah, I don't know. I think that's accurate. Okay. Yeah, I've just I always thought Bill. I think I just like Italian guys. And well, Bill Compton oh, looks right. like an Italian man. Um, that's fair. Let's see. So, gentleman's name is Stephen Moyer, and he is British. Oh my god. So he has a British accent. He looks Italian. Yum. Yeah, he's sexy. <laughs> I just think he's so sexy. And his character is like so traditional. Like he's very like, I'm going to protect you, Sookie. And you're like, yeah, that's what I'm about. <laughs> I'm about that shit. For sure. It seems like a lot of like so many people now are like, I'm a strong independent woman. I'm like, fuck that. I've had to be a strong, independent woman my whole life. It's I'm <laughs> <sick of> it. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm still gonna be that, but I would rather have a man who, you know, who I don't also have to be strong and independent for. Sure. Yep. Understandable. Uh yeah, that's my choice because I can't <laughs> fucking Eric. think of anything else. Yep. Eric from True Blood. If you haven't seen that, you should watch that show. It's actually really good. I tried one episode a very long time ago, and it did not grab me. But yeah. that's not to say I can't try again. If you watch a couple episodes and like kind of like get to like Suki is annoying, I'll say that uh-huh. that's for sure. But Lafayette is the best character in the world. Okay. He's just like this super flamboyant black man who is the cook where Suki I works. I remember him. Yeah. And his lines are just, he calls Sookie hookah. He's like, no hookah. (laughs) Like, he's just so amazing. I absolutely love that show. Okay. Yeah. It's worth a shot. I can give that a shot. 
It's worth another shot. I used yeah. to ride my bike to my cousin's house to watch that every week because she got <laughs> HBO and I didn't. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And she was team Eric and I was team Bill. So there was yeah. conflict arisen. There was contention. There was sure. contention over that for sure. But we got through it. <laughs> we got through it. We did. Well, oh, anyway, <laughs> laughing in the dark season three. We did it. We did it. Um, so I have a, a one last question for you, Randy. Sure. If you were to speak to a brand new listener, let's say this is someone who they just met me at a bar or they just heard about me from a friend or they just stumbled across this this podcast. And this uh-huh. is the first episode that they've ever heard. Two part question. What would you tell them about this show to prepare them to listen to more episodes? And two, Mm -hmm. which episode would you recommend to them? Okay. Um, As far as, okay, so first question was, what would I say to them to prepare them for the rest of the show? And I would say the show has a lot of really excellent banter. Uh, in very, very interesting locations. And hearing about the history with a comic is definitely the best way to hear about fucking any kind of history. Um, so be ready for that because it's it's a lot it's it's a lot of very it's a lot of very fun and interesting experiences that you get to share and it does feel like you're there, which again, you do a great job of capturing. Thank as you. far as yeah the episodes i would episode i'd recommend that is really tough i found the winchester mystery house episode to be particularly fascinating um but if i'm going with straight up incredibly fun then i would stick with uh episode 5 in season 2 the which is uh uh fucking god damn it is that <laughs> the scaredy cat god damn it oh, oh I'm justin so... hoff justin hoff yes, thank at you. elizabeth lake i wanted to say joseph hill and i'm like nope went to high school with that dude not the same person <laughs> justin hoff my buddy justin hoff yes yeah. so really out of all three seasons that was your favorite one i love that one i <laughs> fucking love is that it because one. he got scared yeah that's that's the biggest reason. I think yeah. that he was incredibly entertaining. I thought the location was super fascinating. Yeah. Um, but really, there is something about hearing you who is not scared at all. <laughs> not dealing with, because that's absolutely not the right word, but uh, experiencing both the normal thing that you have with going to the location and telling the story and also having to react to him being incredibly terrified. Mm -hmm. Like I love hearing other, (laughs) I love hearing people laugh at other people who are scared. (laughs) It's so fucked up, but it's so goddamn funny (laughs) to hear you laughing at him when he's terrified. (laughs) Yeah, it's I it fucking well, tickles me every time. And I don't and I don't try to be mean about it at all. No, I, no, not at all. I genuinely find it hilarious when people are scared. Yeah. And yeah. the it's thing It's really funny. It's really funny and I laugh because it's hilarious, but I also I I make a good This is something I do. I think I do well is I make sure the comedian feels comfortable. So I yeah. really do tell them like, "Hey, if it's time to go, you're in the driver's seat. You get to let us know. And it's like, this is supposed to be fun. I'm not yeah. here to traumatize you. When you're right. ready to go, we're going to go. So right. you're in control. Is it time yet? Well, no, I don't want to be a pussy. Okay. But when it's time, you let me know and then we go. That <laughs> Sounds fine. like it's not time yet. Yeah. But, when, <laughs> but, it, but you can literally cut me off and say, listen, we're done. We're leaving. And that's fine. Yeah. And that's what we'll do. And we will yeah. go get dinner and hang out and we'll tell the rest of the story at a bar. Like... It, we don't have to do this. This is supposed yeah. to be fun. However, up until that point, what is so exciting for me is I never know when that episode is coming, when the comic is going to yeah. just absolutely flip out. 
And it's great because it's like I have put so much work into that episode that it's almost like a payoff, like to have the comic be like, I am affected by this, you know? Yeah. That is a very cool, that's a very cool feeling. I think the season finale of season two at the Glen Tavern Inn with um, Stephen, uh, Mm. Stephen AJ, AJ, I remember... I was kind of feeling like freaked out too. That was like the first episode that I think I got scared. Okay. Because I would not sleep in the haunted room at the Glen Tavern Inn. I slept in a different okay. room. And I was still I still stayed at the Glen Tavern Inn. My comedian drove home two and a half hours in the middle Whoa. of the night. Yeah. He would not stay even on the premises. He went, he drove wow. back. In the middle of like not not in the middle of the night, like ten thirty PM. I mean, he drove back home at like three in the morning. Jeez. Like, Christ. yeah, he would not stay there. That's um nuts. And I for the first time refused to stay in the haunted room. Even though we had it, we had it available to us. Um, I chose to sleep in a different room on the premises because that was the first time I was in a haunted place. I'm not going to say that I was convinced that it was haunted because that's happened before too, but I felt threatened by the force that was there. Oh, okay. That was the first time I genuinely felt threatened. And I kind of was like, yeah, okay. I don't think this is something that I want to disturb for the night. Um, what one thing I remember about that episode was standing in front of an open door because I would hear like a knock like this oh, okay, on sure. my door. And I would think, okay, that's probably a kid playing with us. Like someone's fucking with us. Because every time we opened the door, nobody would be there. Right. So I just left the door open and we were standing there talking. And then I heard the knock again and I was staring out <laughs> the door and nobody was in the hallway. And that's when I was like, this is, we're for sure. Out. It's. Yeah, it's not a matter of is there a ghost here? There is a ghost here for sure. Right. So it's not a matter of is there a ghost here? It's how pissed off is it? Yeah, and it's clear, and it was, <laughs> it, you know, nothing that physically happened to us was dramatic enough or negative or impactful enough to justify it to anyone else telling the story why I wouldn't want right. to spend the night there. But there was just this feeling of like absolute you should not be here. Yeah. That was for sure. Um, One thing that really stood out about that episode too was that I've done several episodes in haunted hotels and haunted bed and breakfast and and et cetera. And usually when I go to the front desk, before I'm recording at all, when I'm just checking in, when I check in and they see that I've selected a specific hotel room, they're usually like, Oh, you chose the haunted room. Oh, you're going to be in room 27 or whatever. Sure. You know, they'll kind of like tease me for it. Right. And that episode in particular, when I got there, when I went to check in, and this is a tiny bed and breakfast in the middle of nowhere in California. Right. Uh, I went to check in and the guy said, are you sure you want to be in this room? And I was like, yeah, I know it's the haunted room. I know the stories like that's why we're there. And he said, okay, are you going to be here alone? And I said, no, I have a comedian coming with me. Like I do this podcast and whatever. And he was like, um, do you want to take another room for tonight? Just in case this one doesn't work out. Like he was very concerned for me. And that to me was like really telling. And I, I was kind of like, oh, interesting. The other thing that was very unique about that location is that everyone who worked there left at night. nobody was there at night and they told me that several times they were like just so you know nobody will be at the front desk nobody will be here at night everyone leaves at like 10 p.m nobody spends the night here nobody is working here overnight wow and after employees left that's when dolls were moving around like that place is haunted as fuck (laughs) <laughs> that is a very, very, very haunted place. Yeah. Woof. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so not really... that that was the only place that I was like, you know, I'm gonna stay in this haunted place. I'm not gonna stay in the haunted room. This is this might be just beyond me. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you don't want to scare yourself out of doing the show. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't think that would ever happen. I would. Sure. Well, you know, yeah. I would justify it later on. I'd be like, oh, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> PTSD was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll come out with uh, some new content, and I bet you I'll be staying at more terrible haunted places very soon. Oh, for sure. <laughs> we'll get to see you get terrified some other time. Yeah, someday it'll happen. <laughs> oh, shit. Ooh, excuse me. No, Sorry. you're fine. Well, I mean... That's it. That's all she wrote, I think, for season three. I think that is all she wrote. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Happy motherfucking Halloween. Enjoy All Saints Day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Is that the day after Halloween or something? It's the day after Halloween, yeah. Great. All Hallows Eve and then All Saints Day. Well, do you know the night before Halloween in Detroit is called Devil's Night? Did you know that? I did know that, yeah. That's a Detroit thing. That's always fun. <laughs> so, a little Halloween pre party. It actually used to be like a night that you should not be out because like debauchery happens. Not fun debauchery, but like. Oh, fucked up debauchery. Bad, bad shit. Oh, or then, bad. I mean, really, I mean, I was in the suburbs. <clears throat> so it was really like you might have your house egged. <laughs> but, <Okay. laughs> but generally, it's supposed to be a night that like people get hurt. Okay. Well. Uh, don't go out uh, yesterday. Yeah, don't go and, out yesterday if you can avoid it. But if you do, um, you know, wear a helmet. And have fun. And have fun. Just have fun. Get in, Every night, Get into have some fun. good debauchery. Every day and night, get into good debauchery and have fun. Yes. Supported. We we endorse that statement. That's what we're about here at Laughing in the Dark. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I don't know when season four is coming out, but... Someday. We'll see you then. We'll see you then. Yeah. Happy <laughs> Halloween. We love you. We love you guys. Goodbye. You. Goodbye. <laughs>is brought to you in part by Heck Yeah Studio. Heck Yeah Studio is a creative effort working with people to create meaningful things. At Heck Yeah Studio, they work with clients to turn their ideas or existing brands into real or better versions. Heck Yeah Studio is the place to go for custom illustration for a full range of branding services like killer logos, great colors and typography, and fun illustrations for pins, signs, prints, shirts, vehicles, posters, or anything you can imagine. At Heck Yeah Studio, they work with love. Their dream client is someone who is passionate about what they do. At Laughing in the Dark, Heck Yeah Studio has designed our logo, all of our merch, and any posters or stickers that we have. I am so proud and lucky to work with such an awesome company, and I could not recommend them higher.